Hello students, a very important topic of algebra is functions and series. Normally, we get huge statement questions based on this topic. Generally, students don't even prepare this topic, but it is not necessary that you have to be technically sound in this topic. We can manipulate options, we can crack all the sums. So let us start. As you can see, my sum is find the value of square root of 1 plus 1 upon 1 square plus 1 upon 2 square plus 1 upon square root of 1 plus 1 upon 2 square plus 1 upon 3 square so on up to and the last term is also mentioned this is an original cat question now you can see this is neither an ap nor a gp nor a geometric sequence so how can we solve it we have options in this question. So by manipulating options, we can solve this sum. How come? Let us see. First of all, how many number of terms are here? As you can see, the second term in the square root is starting with 1 here. Then we have 2 and the series is going up to 2007. Or we can take the third term as well. The sequence is starting from 2 then we have 3, then we have 4, and the sequence is going up to 2008. So simply we can say this is nothing but sum of first 2007 terms. Now you can see the options. All the options are in the format of 2007 or 2008. How to solve these kind of sums? when the last term is also mentioned or the number of terms is mentioned. See, you will convert the whole sum in n. So, if I take the sum, I'll consider because it was given that there are 2007 terms, I'll replace this 2007 by n. So, my question will become find the sum of n terms where first two terms are mentioned. They are 1 plus 1 upon 1 square plus 1 upon 2 square plus square root of 1 plus 1 upon 2 square plus 1 upon 3 square and so on up to. We want to find sum of n terms. Now, by taking all the options, see the first option that is 2008 minus 1 upon 2008. Since we are considering 2007 to be n, that's why my first option will become n plus 1 minus 1 upon n plus 1. Since n was 2007, that's why 2008 will be n plus 1. Now coming to second option, that will be n minus 1 upon n. Now taking the third option, that is n minus 1 upon n plus 1. Now the fourth option that is n plus 1 minus 1 upon n. So these are the options. We have converted the whole sum into n. Now, we'll solve this sum by value putting. If we take n as 1, it means we are calculating s1. s1 will be nothing but sum of first one term. That is first term only. It will be 1 upon 1 square plus 1 upon 2 square plus 1. If we solve it, we will get 3 by 2. So, now we will put the same value in the options. If we take the very first option, if we take n as 1 in that, it will be 2 minus 1 upon 2, which comes out to be 3 by 2. And you can see 3 by 2, that was needed. So, first option, that is a possible answer. But we cannot confirm that it is the only possibility. So, we will check other options as well. Now, if we take n as 1 in second option, we'll get 0. Definitely, this is not the answer because my answer should be 3 by 2. If we take next option, it will be 1 minus half, which will give you half. If we take next option, it will give you 2 minus 1 upon 1, which comes out to be 1. Again, third and fourth, they all are rejected. That's why only first option we are left with and this is the answer. Suppose there is a tie between these two options, say any two options. So, what will we do in that case? We will check the same thing for n is equal to 2. We will check the sum of first two terms. Then we will follow the same criteria, I mean the value putting. We will take n as 2. So, 
will be left with only one term that will be our final answer so i think the idea is clear to see the full length video and to learn more such concepts log into hitbullseye.com happy learning thank you so much